Kia ora everybody, what's up? Rebecca Hollis here and I'm joined at the infamous couch with... Rachel G. Willie Reynolds. How are we team? Amazing, yeah. Very, very cool. So this is round two of this. We did it before, a little technical issue, but we're back again. So let's pretend we did this for the first time. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about, about yourself, Rachel and Will. Um, so me and Rebecca met when he asked me to speak at the Elite last year. Um, and basically I've just been in the startup space for the past few years trying to make projects and then fail and then learn from that and then hopefully in the future use the knowledge that I've learned to build something really big. And um, we are talking about before, you were the most uh, positively spoken about speaker from the whole event that yeah. everyone was really, 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 really impressed with. So um, props here, so we're, we're in the company of speaking greatness with Rachel G. And how about, what, what about yourself? Well, give us, give us your, your scoop. Last four years sort of stumbled by luck into entrepreneurship community or just read a lot and learned a lot at the moment running a car cleaning at your door business. That's Water right. Works NZ. You. What's it called? Uh, Waterworks NZ. That's right. Um, hit up the council and government Facebook pages and tell them to give us the contract. We're working on that <laughs> at the moment. Dude, I love, love the hustle. It's awesome. Now, um, we were catching up today because you've got a little something happening next month, which I'm excited about. You obviously can't drop the names or anything, but <laughs> for, for those who are out there listening, if um, what is it that you little misfits are up to that is going to be epic and mega that's happening on the 13th? August 13th. Teen Entrepreneurship Conference, um, just line up of dope speakers, hopefully good, good food. Hopefully. <laughs> no, there will be good food. There will be, be good amazing food, it just food. which food. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about it. So you're doing, you're doing a, um, a youth entrepreneurship uh, conference next month? Next month, Where's yep. it at? It's at AUT, um, the conference room on the 13th of August, and we'll have amazing speakers lined up. And like Rachel? Also, yeah. Are you going to do a keynote? I don't know, probably you know, of not. Of course you got to do a keynote, you got to jump in there. Do people speak at their own events? I didn't. I talked <laughs> shit in between it. Maybe that's the play. And then, and then it was kind of weird, someone was like, hey, I was hoping you speak. I was like, stuff that. People see enough of me, no one wants to hear my shit. Um, go for it. No, no, yeah, so what else is going to be? What's the, why, actually, I'd, Michael Van Havel said, is it waterworks.co.nz, what was the address? Uh, waterworksnz.com. Yeah. It's currently going through a major reboot. <laughs> but yeah. That's like saying, check out my website, but... I'm still currently working on it. Uh, we like had it sorted like five months ago, and then someone came in and said it's terrible, so we teared half of it off. Oh, classic. Okay, get back to this epic event that's happening on the third. Let's just plug this shit up. So who, <laughs> who is the ideal target that you want to come to this youth entrepreneurship festival conference thing? Who, who is it? Pretty much like ambitious young people. We want to get as many like-minded young people under the same roof as possible and have the opportunity for everyone to connect and make connections as Will and I we were lucky to stumble across each other and we've actually went did you swipe was it swipe right <laughs> how, how did you do it is it no yeah swipe right no, no. <laughs> super light <laughs> go for it yeah yeah and so I know there's like other people out there that we want to connect with and hopefully maybe in the future like five ten years maybe we're going to start something real cool together yeah there's um I know there's a 20, 30 people across the country are really like ambitious and doing some awesome stuff and we've got but I think there's another few hundred people who just haven't been lucky enough or driven enough to sort of stumble into the atmosphere, the sort of culture that yeah. could really go out and start some cool stuff. So I think there's way more than 20 to 30. I think there's hundreds, if not thousands, the problem is exactly your point, they don't know how to get in. Yeah. You know, like maybe talk a bit about your thing or like how do you sort of stumble into the entrepreneurial landscape with your stuff like, well, apart from waterworks NZ. Yeah. Dot com. yeah uh four years ago i was like interested in investment banking and all the boring crappy stuff and got into that sort of industry just hustling and learning and did some internships and went to the states with a team of them and then i was lucky enough to get introduced to the ice angels and ice house community yep. just seen for the last year all the events all the startups some awesome stuff and read sort of Peter Thiel's Zero to One and got really into just starting stuff. And Very I cool. guess since I was young, since I was maybe eight, just going around like getting friends to help me sell things and... What was your first, what was your first business? What was the first thing you sold? Do you remember? Yep, selling like baked goods and stuff and going around like... Nice. Yeah, you know, soccer games. Very cool. How about yourself, Rach? What was your first endeavour into the entrepreneurial landscape? Um, I think when I was 10, I bought my first iPod Touch. So I used that, my money from getting like 
high distinction awards in school because I didn't get pocket money. I think that kind of motivated me into entrepreneurship because I like needed money. I needed to make money somehow. Yep. Um, and then so with my iPod Touch, I was exposed to like the internet and everything on the internet was full of so much knowledge. And I learned so much. I started reading up books on entrepreneurship and pretty much I've always had that like mindset to like solve problems. Was there a book, the, what, what was the sort of the best entrepreneurial book you read? Um, recently I read Elon Musk's book and I think that oh, was yeah. amazing. Was it good? Yeah, it was quite raw as well. It showed like his, all his like dark sides. It's not just a glamorous success and stuff. No, what's well, interesting because people call him crazy for 20 years and then he pops yeah. out the other side and everyone wants to be his best mate. Yeah. Um, I'll Michael, say on, on the... Sorry. On the Elon Musk note, there's a great blog by Wait But Why, um, and it's on Elon Musk, four parts, turns out like a book. I loved it. That's sort of catapulted me into the cliche, I want to change the world and yeah. do yeah. huge things. It's pretty mega. Do you think the attitude for youth is driven more towards how education used to be, or do you think for those that are going through high school, is it a lot easier to see other ways and stuff as well? Like, is, like so from when I was 17... That wasn't really kind of the path, kind of. It was sort of, you still sort of expected to go to uni and stuff as well. Like, do you feel the pressure of if you want to do business to do that and uni? Do you, like, what's the kind of conversation of those in high school at the moment around when it comes to, like, business and future? Like, what are you going to do when you leave high school? Like, like kind of, just, just genuinely, I'm just be interested to know, like, what's the sort of vibe? Do you um, So for me, I think I want to go to uni because I want to learn real practical skills that yeah. I think uni can provide me. What are you going to, like, business? What oh, no, not, I'm not going to do, like, business or commerce. Um, maybe, like, engineering or something, like, oh, technology-related. Wow. Cool. Um, but I, I know what you mean. But I think right now, even, like, classroom learning, it has changed so much throughout my five years at high school. Like, Talk me through that. Yeah, go for it. Because I'm actually really, I'm just genuinely interested around that, that section, especially with the integration of technology yeah. into high school stuff as well, so... Yeah. So my year is actually the last ever year that we haven't used digital examinations. So NZQA, they're incorporating digital exams into like exams. Yeah, like just computers type out oh, your yeah, essays yeah. and stuff. Um, and classroom learning, we now use like Google Classroom, so online. We get assessments okay. through that, internals through that. And that wasn't evident like five years ago when I first came to high school. How were they doing it then? Just handing out just paper. Got, oh, still pen and paper. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm still not good. saying it's not pen and paper now, but... Uh, very big chunk of it is actually online and getting assignments online and, and a, stuff. And are students in general more stoked that it's digital than the writing side? Like, like, what's the feedback been from students in general or about it all? It's just mixed. I, th I mean, it's mixed. It's not. Some people are just anti it completely. It's weird. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, anti the tech or anti the paper? Anti like the tech. tech. Yeah. And really, it's about. I don't know what the exact split is, but there are people super anti-tech and super anti-paper. Why do you think the... Is that because it's been forced into... They have to change into the new way and they're not stoked on it? Yeah. Got you, opposed to those who will start now and say... Is it called third form or is it year nine? What do they call it? Yeah. Like my yeah, sister's year in year ten and pretty much she's just on her laptop all the time doing assignments and stuff. But me and Will, we've like gone through that pen and pr paper process more evidently than her generation has and I think there are certain subjects where it's actually easier to use pen and papers like I'm a science student for chemistry and for maths it's actually easier yeah um, but if you're like English or like geography history or something then it's probably easier to use devices um I thought your question like back at the start was quite interesting and that's do you see lots of different routes rather than uni and school yeah um, jump back in yeah and honestly no like a really big struggle for waterworks and everything I've tried I've tried and failed like little things it's everyone is so focused on the path like just yep. going through school going to university or well, they've got their heads down just partying work um, whatever I'm else sorry you guys are 17 I've never heard of the word of partying until you're 18 <laughs> but yeah continue oh, yeah. Yeah. see it's actually funny Justin trolled me before he was like no whiskey I was like no there's no whiskey <laughs> Justin stuff you yeah go on <laughs> Um, but it's like they don't see the benefits of we've been lucky enough and people across the country have been lucky enough to stumble into this one way or another like mine was I found a passion and I just hustled and learnt and as much as I could but what we're trying to do with this conference is really find all the people who haven't seen that all the options yep. and stuff and maybe there are thousands of people across the country who That's right. at university they'll stumble across it 
that right now they could be going, they could be starting things and doing awesome things and completely sidestepping the traditional route. So do you feel that a lot of your peers that could get into it more too, with their heads down too much, so part of the goal of this is just to make them like look up a little bit, right? Yeah, Pretty much, yeah. There's some I people feel on the cell phone texting while they're walking down Queen Street yeah. with like thousands of people hitting them in the, sh- in the face. It's like just eyes are opened when you meet awesome people like Rachel and just the whole community of just... And so how do you guys, awesome. guys and girls communicate in terms of like the younger entrepreneurial landscape? Is it like Facebook groups or is it like how, how you, is it just more in sort of person catch up to them in business? Like how do you exchange like information, like, like business chat stuff like I'm just like genuinely so intrigued. How does that work? I think it's actually quite difficult to connect with other young people because yeah. there's all, all there's that thing where you don't actually know who they are, and then there's also that st- stigma. If you reach out to them, they might think you're weird or something. Totally, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the best way is pretty much through events, um, maybe through young enterprise. I only did that this year, but I've actually met quite a bit of people from that. Yeah, talk, talk a bit about that because obviously I've seen it from afar and again a bit closer to it now. Like, what, what's the sort of vibe? How did, like, someone's watching from a smaller rural town. Give us the concept of, of what that is, how it works, and give us a bit of the, the 101. Uh, it's my second year, and I, I mean, I love it. It's what is it? It's really cool. It's you get put in teams of six or seven. Um, from your school, people who are interested in, say, business, it could be co-curricular, it could be as a subject, um, and then you band together and you're given support and you get to go to events and they give you ideas for how to brainstorm ideas. Uh, how long does it go for? Uh, all year, from February to November, and then you wrap up your virtual company. And then there are few, a few out of the 3,600 students get to um, actually do something. Or yeah, do something cool. cool. But it's more taste for everyone. Now, we were talking about um, uh, an upcoming trip to somewhere pretty amazingly special. Yeah. Does anyone on this couch would like to talk about that to get the people at home <laughs> jealous around the future of New Zealand's youth entrepreneurs who are dominating? Yeah, well, the best part of Young Enterprise by far, besides the awesome mentors, is the events they throw up. And yep. so 124 people, uh, 64 in Wellington, 64 in Auckland uh, or North Island, were selected to go for a weekend of, it's called Entrepreneurs in Action, and you spend 10 hours doing super hard challenges, and then you pitch at the end of the day, your team gets through, Massey University gives the winners $2,000 scholarships, do that Saturday, Sunday, and then Sunday night, 15 of the sort of leaders are selected to go through to an individual challenge. Yep. And do you want to finish? Um, the individual challenge is like a quick fire challenge. So you got 10 minutes in a room with pen and paper, no internet, no phones, and then you had two minutes to present your idea. And then three people were chosen from that 15 to win a overseas study tour. So that was Continue. amazing. Continue. And then what happened? And then... <laughs> yeah, and then we, we were selected. So it was dope. Yeah. Shit, yeah. So how many yeah. got selected? Uh, Three in this out of the sixty-four in Auckland, and then there'll be three in Wellington in a few weeks' time. So you've made you you are sixty-six percent of the winning the winners from the Auckland area. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Matt, Stenton, and yeah. Billington. I got you. Now, oh, the Matt's the other. The, the, the yeah. Other thing. Sorry. Okay, got you. And where are you going? Oh, that's the best part. Okay, San Fran, <laughs> San Francisco. And what the hell are you doing in San Fran? They haven't told us yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pr- I'm pretty sure I know where you're going to be going. What, and you're going to go there for how long? Like you, but basically, they dominated this competition. They've won three out of a whole bunch of people that went for it, and they're getting to go to San Francisco to go check out all the cool stuff. Yeah. Imagine, I'm imagining some tech companies are there yeah. Yeah. and some shared spaces and creative stuff's there and a whole bunch of stuff. So when, when does that go down? October 7th, we head out for a week, and then... It's not set yet, but you see companies like Facebook, Google, some awesome Kiwis over there, like working on the Kiwi landing pad, and yeah, just sort of hook up with that community. Very cool. And what else is going on? How's the the expansion of WaterworksNZ.com been going lately? It's good. Um, had to um, expand the team, um, which is interesting. I'd rather expand it with people over the country, um, yep. but we've. It's going well. We've got an and awesome so what, team. So what is it? So if I have a small brain. Tell me. Yeah. So Auckland City, uh, just about all to the right of it, will be on the North Shore in a couple of months' time. So what does it do? How does it work? 
All right. Um, you go online, pick a time that works for you. Uh, we turn up at your door, clean your car, or a local student, one of the 95 trained students in our um, in our team, uh, yep. turns up and cleans your car. And that's it. Yeah, dope. So c- cl- clean cars at your house yep. whenever you want, and you can pre-book it in. Yep, and it's just job opportunities for trained uh, local students. Cool, and so you're giving jobs to students and people. And how are you currently marketing? How, how's the business sort of getting out there at the moment? Uh, so we had some awesome help from the team at Navely, Casey Eden and Shane Bradley. They've given us a um, premium listing, and we're doing some advertising through that platform. Very um, cool. We're setting that up. And then just set up Facebook and LinkedIn advertising too. Mega. And Rachel, what's sort of keeping you busy on the entrepreneurial landscape since, um, since the leap? Yeah, currently pursuing Thrivo. So that's basically a youth marketing agency to help businesses better market to engage, appeal, and connect with my generation, which is in Gen Z. And so I'm hoping... So that kind of works with Will's um, idea of providing jobs. So it's also about taking teenagers out of like mundane supermarket fast food jobs into real and productive jobs, such as like managing a business's social media page, doing what teenagers are best at doing. Yep. And so, do you, so you place like students and talent and stuff in businesses to help them with their social. Like, what are some of the? Because it's quite interesting. So, in the obviously in the the media agency landscape, everyone is. Um, getting more digitally savvy or trying to. The big cruise ships are trying to become the speedboats. The big brands are trying to get to the young bucks. But then you are right, no one operates the nuances of youth then youth. Yeah. So sort of like where do you sort of see the – was there something specifically you saw in the, the current marketing landscape that you saw was sort of broken? Like what was kind of the, the impetus of like the, the idea to, to sort of launch into that sort of – the idea to sort of do it, right? Did you see the failures that was happening or how did you sort of find out? Yeah, so um, I think a lot of businesses ad- are trying to advertise to my generation the same way they did with millennials, and I don't think that's working as well. In what ways do you think? I think because the difference between Gen Z and millennials is that millennials, they've had to adapt to technology over their lifetime, and Gen Z, we haven't seen a world without one. We've like been on social so media. From day one. Yeah, so... And also, we have a very sensitive BS radar. We can sense... Some, when something's not authentic so easily. And since we're exposed to hundreds of ads as we just scroll through Facebook, we have a very short attention span, like that of a goldfish. Yep. And so what that means is brands only have a few seconds to engage with us to make their content more appealing. Very cool. And so what type of like brands or businesses is sort of ideal for how you want to sort of set up? Or Is it mostly managing social accounts or is it kind of like what's the sort of the main type of services and products that would differentiate um, you from sort of some of the other players in the market? Yeah, so I'm trying, I'm still establishing it, getting clients and stuff, but um, basically it is like a bit like a social media marketing agency, but specializing in youth marketing. Nice. And what, um, when I read the four hour w- work week, it inspired me, like how could I cope with high demand? Because there's no point in me working 300 hours a week or something to scramble up with all these businesses. So yeah. it's also about divvying out the jobs, um, providing opportunities for my generation and because they're like real teenagers with real understandings for like real solutions yeah um rosie greystone says rachel was spot on what is her website oh thrivo.nz there you go so it's like thrive with an o instead of the e right yeah thrivo there you go thrivo.nz very cool Uh, someone uh here we go justin Flippin' love Justin. Can Rachel recall the last ad that stopped her scrolling through her feed, and what was it about the content that made her give it the time of day? Oh, uh, the community's coming back on the media agency spin. I love it. <laughs> so, Rachel, what was the last ad that stopped you scrolling through your feed? Oh, I don't think I can remember. I think the ads that are more appealing to me are video ads. Um, pretty much ads that kind of aren't an ad in the way, like they have to have like some value that I see from it. So maybe it's like a video, or maybe it's an influencer I care about. Um, yep. And I know you have thoughts on like the influencer marketing and fake influencers, and I think my generation can kind of spot that quite easily. Well, it's, it, the thing as well with that is there's not the same regulation to say like it is in the States yet. It's getting a bit better, and um, Instagram just released that whole branded uh, partnership posting, so you can it has, it's mandatory or else it's kind of illegal. Yeah. I think that's... It will get here soon. Yeah. My thing was just more on the fact of like 
you can literally go and see that like everyone's buying into the Kool Aid, but half the Kool Aid shit. So yeah. it's just like guys, just well, brands were getting screwed. So, I, I, but I think exactly the point. The the micro influencers, I think, is the new the new uh, mega influencer, in my opinion. Yeah. We gonna jump in, Will? Jump. I know. Just gonna make a um, yeah. No quip about Waterworks advertising. So okay, go. I lost that. What have you? Have you what? How are you advertising? Do you I'm, need a Do you need a marketing agency? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was mid grade adverts. I was gonna be like those Waterworks NZ dot com adverts. Oh yeah, is that how you doing it? Um, Craig Cotton says, um, "What's their view of the value in doing a, a Facebook live feed like this?" We we're actually just talking about this before. So, uh, what do you think is the value of doing a Facebook live feed like this? I was asking her about that. <laughs> yeah, we were. We were. <laughs> no, wondering I was that supposed to be asking you. You're not Great supposed to be asking me. I'm, I'm supposed to be here, like learning, like, learning off the young bucks. Um, oh, Justin says um, organic integration of products versus advertising of products. I think there's more yeah. to, is that what you're sort of talking about, Rachel? Like the, so, so actually, it's probably, I think the question Justin's trying to get to, the video that you see that does stop you, is it organic integration of those, of those products or advertising of the products? Like, in your opinion, like, what do you think is kind of more of the, the more watchable or usable or type, like, what's um, your sort of take on I that? I think what's interesting that I think is going to be a strategy for a lot of businesses is actually the aim to go viral with their products. So once it goes viral, you actually get so much media and stuff. And I read this thing, it's like about PR and that kind of works with the viral thing. It's like advertising is telling them you're good and PR is convincing them you're good. Okay. So I guess... I so I love the um, move to experiential sort of marketing, like really getting involved. Like um, I think a AMI Insurance was doing a um, collaboration with who is it? Interlake. Interlake, um, and yep. it's Clinton. more yep. yeah, oh, Clinton, it's more doing yeah. something different and in person rather than I mean traditional media channels with hundreds of thousands of kids like us going and trying the same main channels. That's they're just so many brands and little companies and e-commerce sites clogging things up. Whereas when you get in person, it really makes a difference. So you're saying experiential will become more important for yep. the for so what's it? What are you guys? The Gen Z? Yep. What am I? A millennial? All right. Um, Justin Smith. Oh, do they watch YouTube vloggers? Do you watch YouTube vloggers? I think Will just does. started to. Um, what, who you been watching? Oh, someone put me on to. Gary Z, but I quite like um, Noah Kagan. Okay. He's, he's a pretty cool entrepreneur in the States. He and started what? sumo.com. Okay. And, yeah. How about yeah. yourself, George? Yeah, I watch YouTube. Um, I think I saw this interesting thing about YouTube the other day that heaps of the older YouTubers who've been there since maybe 2010 or something their channels are dying out because all these new YouTubers are coming in and producing daily vlogs, daily content. Are they being them on quantity? Yeah, on content. And they're just putting out content out there every day. And then the other people are putting out content like once once a week or something. And they're just falling behind and not growing as fast as well. And was the point of it being consistency of new vlogging is just overwhelmingly, plus it's new and fresh and more, it's seen as it's seen as cooler because the consumption is at a higher rate for the people that are using it. Yeah, and I also think that consistency helps to build trust within your audience. Because if you're not consistent, they're not like they don't know if you're there to stay or if you're just doing it one off or something. Got yeah. And so, so do you think is that the kind of the, the anti comment of like, oh, they post too much? If yeah. it's If they post a lot but consistently at a time, they see it as value, not a detriment to the brand. Yeah, I guess it depends because um, some brands like. Some brands, I think Nike or like, I'm not sure, but like some big brands, they actually only post maybe a few times a month or a few times a week, not like 10 posts a day. Yeah. And they're actually doing pretty well because people don't want to see their content every day. Yep, but if you, yeah, yep. if you want to watch YouTubers and you like them, you might want to see what they're doing every day. Like if you care so much about their life. Yeah, the, the, the growth of the, the personal vlogging is quite, has become quite interesting to see. That, that, the other thing I think with it as well is, Basically, it exposes real sh quick if you're shit and you don't know what you're talking about because you can't make up that much stuff for that often, that consistently, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think an issue, a question actually I would ask you, someone was talking about the other day, if they ask anyone under 18, I don't know what the number was, who their top five celebrities are, they wouldn't say, not a single person would say a television star. Everyone would be an internet or a digital 
person, right? Like, is, would that be the same for yourselves? Like, who would be the top, like the, the top celebrities or the top people that you look up to? Are they TV stars or are they web stars? Who are they for you? I think that'd be weird because they're all entrepreneurs and mix of sort of. But that, but it's not TV. TV like, I guess yeah. the point of being like, are they like internet, web, social, digital people, or are they mainstream? TV one, two, three at eight thirty every Tuesday, Wednesday night. Celebrities, yeah. Yeah, I think TV for especially for young people, they're not consuming TV as much anymore. But yeah. I don't know, that might just be myself. But I think that's because with the internet, you can watch it on demand. Like TV, you have to fit it around your schedule. Do you watch TV? I don't watch TV that much. You shake your head. How do you how do you consume? Do you do you use your do you use the TV as the utility and push what you want from your phone to the TV? No, I mean, I'd love to watch TV, but I'm always just, I feel pressed for time, or it's like, uh, you're reading I reading Peter Thiel books, that's what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Michael, I uh, love the millennial versus Gen Z comments. What is their opinion about advertising on Snapchat? And Inst- I love it how this whole thing's took to youth marketing and digital. It's flipping great. Um, what is their opinion about advertising on Snapchat and Instagram over Facebook? Here we go. Let's get into it. What's your opinion about advertising? youth marketing compared to Instagram and Facebook like how would you pri- I guess maybe ask a simple question as a 17 year old in New Zealand how would you prioritise the three best platforms for advertising for youth in your opinion I think many businesses haven't tapped into advertising on Snapchat yep. and that could be a very powerful way to get ahead um, personally I don't actually follow any brands or businesses on Snapchat so that will be interesting on how they're going to make me to add them on Snapchat. Because normally once you follow or add someone, you're pretty much there to stay unless they're too spammy or something. And, and I don't know if you saw this last week in the, um, the landscape with Snapchat is the, the, the links and clip. Uh, yes. Clip, what are they called? Clip nails? Whatever they're yes. called. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, scroll up to. Scroll yeah. up to clip through. They've only finally, it's funny, then Snapchat's now yeah. copied Instagram on that. So, but would you say it, one, two, three, out of Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, in your opinion, what's the best platforms for marketing to under-18s in New Zealand, in your opinion? I would say Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, but because Facebook... So you use Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, yeah? As in, Facebook's the best for marketing all the great tools and best platform for it, but it's so clogged up that I'd almost reverse that, but if you were to use Snapchat as your marketing tool, you need to have someone who's really keyed on and, like, innovative about it. Because it's about being different in that case. Have you seen, heard of the Mish Guru guys? Yeah, yeah. That, that weapon's doing cool stuff. Um, uh, Alexia, what's up, Alexia? Have you purchased a product as a result of influencer marketing? Can you give us an example of an effective influencer marketing campaign? Have you ever purchased a product as a result of influencer? I reckon I have. Nothing comes to mind, though. I think influencer marketing isn't... I think influence marketing, a lot of the big, big influencers like Tammy or Kylie Jenner and stuff, what they're actually promoting, I know they're getting paid to because I just just know that because I like work with like social media and stuff. And then so I know they're getting paid to, so it's like... Do you kind of write it off because you know it's copy-paste or you still buy in? Do you think there's going to be a pushback from it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think more people... Of realizing that they're getting paid to promote, like obviously, um, but it is a good promotion way of how they're promoting it. Because yeah. sometimes you can see that they actually do like the product. Sometimes yeah. you can see it's just there in the photo. What's well, the authenticity of it as well? Like, yeah. How about yourself? Well, have you been influenced by the influencers? Uh, I don't follow the typical influencers on like Instagram and stuff. Like I know lots of friends who do, but. I have been influenced by people like Noah Kagan and his podcast and stuff and going, oh, all these great integrations, but that's for sort of business and stuff. Yep. So I guess it's the same. I guess so, but still. Thing. Um, can you give us an example of an effective influencer marketing campaign? Oh, one note I'd add to that, though, yeah. is it's always like the BS radars on. So we always look through and like it has to be transparent because we look it up like if someone recommends it, I'm going to check it against all the other options too. Yeah. yeah. Do you think um, it's just going to be that the challenge with it will be, because I always say, you know, creativity is always going to be the variable. So it's like actually the thinking around how to integrate products coolly, you know, like yeah. I think it's good. Uh, ben Loader, who's this flipping Muppet? Vloggers killed YouTube for real filmmakers. Stuff you, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> 
Benny, if you're not watching, Ben Loder's on the corner there, and vloggers killed YouTube for real filmmakers. Uh, and I'm imagining you're saying they're going to Vimeo, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I know what you're going to say, Ben, before you're going to say it. That's what he's saying. And it's actually a point, why do, you, why do you say that? Do you want to jump in here, Benny? Do you want to get in? Do you want to get famous, <laughs> Benny? We've got a whole bunch of people. Um, why do you say that? Justin did a good comment. It's, they've taken the quality out of YouTube and people are just watching 13 minutes of the files. Yeah. Got yeah. He's saying they've taken the quality of the content out of things. And from an artistic side, I would actually agree. Yeah. Because yeah, if you look at the, the best um, art, creative, storytelling, visuals, yeah. or cinematography, all that stuff, it sits on Vimeo, right? Yeah. In, in my opinion. Anyone can pick up a camera and point out their face for a whole <laughs> Benny said anyone can pick up a camera and put it at their face. Like, That's what we do, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> See, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Um, uh, Ryan Quirk on the YouTube topic follow John Olson quality yep uh, Justin Smith jumped in below again good old Justin quality of content is overrunning qu- quantity of content is overrunning quality on content on YouTube at the moment yeah case in point Scooter Bloody Brad just ask Benny Loder <laughs> who's Scooter Bloody Brad it feels like we've got some Scooter beef going on if those don't know if um if you follow a guy called Ben Loader, I think it, what's your YouTube, Benny? Yeah, I think it's just my name. It's just Ben Loader. So if you, if you Google Ben Loader, he's actually got 11,000 subscribers on YouTube. Nice. He's got 11,000. Yep. He bought, he bought 10,990, but his mum and his family. Got <laughs> he got killed. <laughs> yeah, we killed him. The, the, the blogging killed Benny. Um, Craig Cotton, what's the number one social issue that you are passionate about and why? Ooh, good one. What's the number one social issue? issue that you're passionate about as a 17 year old in New Zealand young entrepreneur does climate change fit under that of course yeah. Oh, yeah that I mean that scares me so much does it actually scare you or does it scare you because it's cool to scare you that and climate change and the whole sort of just really quick changing disruption leaving sort of capital in charge of the world rather than people like winner takes all really scares me into taking action to do something to change it so like being sustainable as well and stuff yeah yeah uh, wh- how about yourself Rachel what's your biggest sort of social piece that you're like passionate about as a young Kiwi um I don't actually know like if I could say like one social issue but I think with a new wave of technology, I think a lot of people aren't realizing the power of artificial intelligence Agreed. and how much it could take over the jobs that they're going to uni four years to study for. Future of jobs, yeah. Um, and I think that even though it takes up many jobs, it will also provide new jobs. Yeah. So I'm a bit scared of how universities are going to cope with that and teaching the right skill set for that. Do you like? It's clear that the current ecosystem around banking, insurance, accounting and all that stuff is it's it's starting to get eaten already and it's gonna just keep chomping away. Like I think that my opinion is that anything that's getting processed by humans will get eliminated. Yeah. The curation and the creativity will become even back to the probably point around media yeah. is it will be the variable. So I'm interested in how that whole landscape, like a forty five year old basic accountant that all of a sudden AI from Zero or one of these big guys or the bank steamroll thing out, what happens to those people? So I think there'll be a one, obviously, from even like the you know autonomous vehicles, all that stuff. That's a million jobs. Cool, all the stuff of the stuff like that. Call centers, they'll be done. Yeah. You know the message bots are already getting um, messenger bots. Yeah. Yeah, like it's getting it's getting interesting. So that's that's good. Um, we got current Alexia. Uh, despite the hype around influencer marketing, I personally, as an eighteen year old, have never bought a product as a result of influencer marketing. There you go. Interesting. Um, Jodie Black, she's joined as well. Very cool. Any other stuff you guys want to, and girls want to yarn about? Any other cool stuff? Uh, do another plug for your, your conference happening. <laughs> do another conference. So, what is happening on the 17th of August? 13th. 13th. Is it 13th or 17th? 13th. 13th at AUT? On a Sunday. It'll be on a, a great Sunday? Day. Yeah. That's cool. There'll be, there'll be eight awesome speakers, some awesome food, um, no, and you've awesome You've questioned co-hosts. the food before. You, are you co-hosting it together? Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Are you going to do like 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 a panel thing like this with a couple of people? Don't ask us questions yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What you should do. You should get um, find like the oldest person you can that has the youngest brain, and like it will chip? trip. It will, like a flipping chip, because it will trip people out. 
around what their expectations of how they're thinking are, more so for the point of don't write off what they look like just because you're young and you don't think you think they're like everyone else. Because I met someone recently in the um, in the in the landscape, and I totally I didn't totally write him off, but I was like, old rich white guy token blah. That's what I felt because he looked apart, whatever. And and with, by the second sentence, he was talking about like a whole bunch of gnarly shit that was totally at, like at a white like a forty year younger level, thirty year younger level, and I was like. Man, I felt actually real bad because I totally <laughs> judged them. And I was like, man, it's probably the same thing. Like, if I go in, they might not think that I'm talking about tech stuff because I look a certain way, I talk a certain way. But then we get into it, so I actually felt like I'd done a really bad job at judging another human. So I think it would be awesome if you had a part of the day where you got them to challenge their thinking of what they think. Because it's like, not so much be combative against the most of it, but there's always slithers of epicness in between mm-hmm. the middle. And that's why it's interesting with Chip, because I think, if you don't know, Chip Dawson friend of ours, he, like, older, white dude, young as shit mentally. Like, his, like, it's flipping unreal, and I think it's, it's a good lesson to learn, so don't always write off a whole bunch of old, stale, pale male <laughs> dudes, because some of them are actually epic. Uh, um, Michael Van Helvel jump back in, uh, sorry, how many of their friends want to start businesses? I think Gen Z is actually the most tech savvy and entrepreneurial generation. I think a lot of them, I think there was a survey, it was like over half of our generation in the future, they want to start businesses, but they don't know how. And I think, I think a lot of them are going to university to do something, a commerce degree or something, because they don't know what they want to do. And because they think it might help them, which it, which it probably will, but it might not as well. Yeah, so that's... Um I connect with a lot of people down in Wellington too that we meet through, I don't know, just chance that are doing some awesome stuff because at my school there are a few people who sort of want to start businesses but there are very few people that I meet that are as awesome as Rachel and a few people down in Wellington and Alexia who's commenting on this. <laughs> yeah. yep. um, but that's sort of what the conference is about going, hey, I mean, it's not easy. So when you hit your first like road bump, don't like crap out, but... It's worth it. It's really cool. How? Just quickly back to that. How do youth that are starting businesses in New Zealand? How are you currently engaging in the ecosystem? Like, where do you go? We kind of talked about it before. We didn't get the answer of it. Where do you actually go to learn between each other? How does that happen? I don't think there is actually a big network for that, unless if you do like young enterprise, which I'm sure many people don't. So yeah. I think I was just thinking, like, as we did our talk, that I was going to set up like a student entrepreneurial group just for NZ because yep. I know there's a few international groups like worldwide and that's a great place to connect with international people but I think just in NZ um, like NZ tech o- ecosystems but for students yep. I think that's a great way and even people who are wanting to get into that scene has an opportunity to connect with people who are already doing stuff as well yep. yeah there isn't really anything existing and there aren't many people who have sort of breached that first step um, and that's why I love talking to people like Rachel and Nick and Andrew and a, a few people down in Wellington and up here in Auckland and Matt who's going on the San Fran trip with us is just, it's so cool to meet. People. Well I probably the, the point is if you know 50% of the people that you know are going to want to start a business but they don't know where, it's just kind of an interesting point of like 100% of them all post stuff on social that's for, I guess, that's content but there's no place that they share those same thoughts in business, right? Yeah. yeah. They're posting about personal, but not about business. They're it's also, about- yeah, it's also, it's like people don't care. Like, I rarely share any business things or anything on my Facebook profile. Um, probably because I don't think my friends care too much. And also because, like, I feel like, as silly as it sounds, it's like not cool to. No, I get it. Yeah. Totally. Because it's like, oh, it's just this young buck trying to talk about business. Stuff. Exactly, yeah. And you think it's because it's out of fear because you haven't done anything yet at scale to prove yourself to have the right to talk about it? Or do you think that it's more just like the self-conscious thing of it's not a, it's not like a support group where everyone can sit around and talk around the, the hard parts in business? Like, do you think it's kind of that type of thing? Yeah. I mainly think people both. don't care. Yeah, both. Both the first part, which is why I was crafting myself coming on here, and the second what? part, which is... <laughs> why? Sorry. <laughs> You're talking no, shit, man. Who cares? <laughs> You're like one person watching. <laughs> but it will be interesting when you guys dominate in five, ten years, and then yeah. you look back and be like, "Look at us on the couch." Hey. Is it going home? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that's but totally ma- cool. But mainly, it is people don't care, and so that's 
there's so few no, no, people. No, the people, the majority of the people, the fifty percent that don't want to start a business don't care. The fifty percent that do, do, but it's the wrong platform for it. Mm. Is yeah. it the equivalent to putting a Snapchat style post on Facebook or a face or a Instagram stories type post on on LinkedIn? It's the just the wrong message for the, it's the right message but the wrong platform. Yeah, and also the wrong network. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, Craig says, "What would their ideal network slash ecosystem to get support to throw their ideas?" I like it, Craig. See where you're going there. Happy with that. Keep it up. So, what would your ideal network or ecosystem to get support to grow ideas look like? I'm not sure. I honestly. But you want don't. to connect clearly. Yeah. So that's, Obviously, you've got the, the, the events sort of side that you're thinking yeah. of, but that's kind of sporadic. Like, how do you see... Me and Rachel and um, some friends down Wellington are wanting to create something like that, but it's not something we could say with a clear vision. It's more see how it goes, connecting as many people who could be interested and become interested, and people who already are doing awesome things just together so we can share ideas and links, like in Facebook groups or through other things, like maybe Slack. And yeah. So do you think they don't... Do it, there's a fear of engagement because they don't want to look stupid? Is that the... You know? Mm, because you're, yeah. kind of, you're killing it in silos, right? But you're not actually connected even though you want to be. But there's not the actual platform to do it. I think heaps of young people are also real humble. I think in New Zealand, quite evidently. Um, like Will, I didn't even know what he was doing until we started talking. Well, it's waterworksnz.com, man. Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so you kind of hear about people's stories more. And I think if we had like a group or something and everyone shared their story, then it would actually attract more engagement. Yeah. Mm, interesting. At the moment, it's just everyone that I admire or really connect with I just send links and say articles that are awesome how do you send it messenger like you personally is it for messenger groups with a couple of them uh, we've started hopefully this event will create a better group but we've started a small Facebook group um, and small messenger groups with people that you know yeah yeah the, the you can clearly tell the appetites there for those interactions it's just what's the structure and process behind it you know so, actually, you guys have plugged for long enough. What about my fucking plug? What's yeah. the time? Is it? What's the time? Is it like? WaterworksNZ.com. LinkedIn. <laughs> no. I was saying it's my time for a plug because in three hours we've got the sushi thing. Because oh. that's kind of what you're talking about, but it's like a small, like it's like cool entrepreneurial meetup to get to here, but it's, it's to that same point that you're talking about. Yeah. There's not many opportunities for the mingling of like minds, right? The same, same sort of thing, but obviously this is going to have sushi and sake and whatever which is great I, I, I just think it, it's, it's valid of the exact point of what we're talking about where they want to connect they don't really know how to so I think that's a huge problem in the New Zealand ecosystem you know like someone commented today like oh cool you've got um, the sushi thing oh when you come to the Bay of Plenty let me know and, I, and I'm just like, like cool but then I was like why don't you flip and do it you just meet at the sushi's place at six like it's pretty <laughs> nothing special you know like <laughs> you know so I think I think it's it's uh, interesting um uh, Evelyn says, for me, I don't want to let out my ideas as so many have been taken and used, so I shut down. I mean, I'll jump in on this. Evelyn, if you're not futurely doing stuff because you're scared of other people doing it, that's just like dumb. Because everyone's always going to do stuff and everyone's always going to steal ideas. If you if you hibernate because other people are being active, you're always going to lose. You just need to like go and out-execute. Like The same ideas have been around for ages it's just who goes out and actually does it faster yeah. better quicker like you know if, if you freeze based on someone else going forward you're always going to be on the back seat you're always going to be on the defense so not doing something just because someone else is going to maybe copy you that stuff that i'd be like cool all, all of us are going to do it but then i'm going to win because i'm going to do it better and faster and quicker and more efficient you know so i take the negativity of like putting the handbrake down of doing what you're thinking of doing to go full batshit and put the pedal to the metal and try and beat them to it. Use it as fuel to go and win, not not do anything. Yeah, like one thing that was said at the leap which stuck with me is, I think Chip or someone said it, like ideas are shit, execution is everything. And that's really true because if you think... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, I'll give you that one. <laughs> one. No, it, it flipping is, right? Like, yeah. It's just like... Cool, great, I've got this idea for this thing, but I need you to sign an NDA. It's like, stuff yeah. you. And I think so many young people actually have these really cool ideas. They're scared to share them as well. Yeah. 
And I think it kind of comes with like being naive, like, oh, someone's going to steal my idea. But if you think about like Facebook, Uber, Google, they're not new things. They're not new things. Yeah, it's about how they were able to execute. Yeah. That made them successful. And, and like, the, the classic is, you know, oh, hey, I'm keen to catch up, talk about this, this epic idea, blah, 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 but, you know, I need to sign the NDA, this and that. I'm like, no, I don't care. Like, cool. I don't care what the flipping thing is. It don't, like, it's the execution. Like, I don't have time to do it, and clearly if you want to yarn, but, like, that, I think, to that point, though, people are scared to, A, talk, because they might feel stupid to their, their peers, but then, B, to actually go and... Um, have that, that the feel of getting copied or the feel of there. It's just I think it's just an, ed, a, a, an a, it's an awareness issue around execution, and I think it's awareness issue of just understanding that look, everyone's got ideas. It's about who executes and who does it better. It's just you know, um, Craig Cotton, do they do they subscribe to Unfiltered? Do you subscribe to Unfiltered? Do now. Do you? Yeah, just last like few weeks. Oh yeah, is it good? Yeah, he was just bombarding my LinkedIn feeds. So. <laughs> Um, so the so Evelyn says so the faster better quicker execution hub is the next step talk open your mouth around the doing yeah I think it's probably open your mouth around the conversation right like you need to people aren't going to do things in real life until they've thought about it and then talked about it but if they're thinking about it but not talking they can't get to the execution so I think they need to work their way back they're clearly doing the thinking I mean all your, your crew are probably clearly doing the same type of thinking do you think it's like like, how would you embrace more of that for youth? Like, how do you, how do you think you approach that? Um, one thing that I feel missing is there, is that once you get going, at least for youth, it's not, I mean, it's both lonely and not easy, um, like, which is that, why I that, That's the same when you're older. Know. Yeah. It's still not, you're still lonely and not easy. Yeah. But you know? as a youth, it's so easy to crap out. So the awesome speakers we're having come on 13th of August. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, um, we're wanting them to talk about their sort of struggles and hard times and that's what I love hearing about and it gives me so much more respect now I've started doing it for people like you and Shane Bradley and all the New Zealand entrepreneurs but it's like once you've done the talking and all of that there's that first stage where I feel most of my friends at school just can't get past disappear yeah yeah do you think it's also a funky time with your age as you're growing and finding yourself and figuring yep. shit out with what you do, how you do it, what you want to be, the confidence levels, all that stuff too, right? Like I think it's, there's a, probably a, there's an awareness issue around the realities of it, but I also think there's a, there's a confidence issue to try. Yep. So I think it's kind of like, would you, like is it, am I kind of off or am I kind of right? No, no that's right, yeah. yeah right. It's yeah. like the fear of failure, but also like the fear of success, I guess, because it's like, what if you do actually end up succeeding and you like can't actually keep up with it or you can't cope with maybe high demand or something? Do you think, in your opinion, people are more scared of failure in 2017 or more scared of success? I think it depends think on the failure. personality. Because failure, but I'm not scared of success. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'll just build a bigger team and, I guess, just run and hopefully not trip. That's my sort of just sprint as fast as I can and people say slow down and just try not trip like what you do I guess dude I'm like but I'm eating shit all the time but at least I'm you know I'll, I'll, I'm learning as I'm going then I'm looping it back around yep. like because I know I want to look back in the shit in 30 years and trip out I'd be like whoa but what I'm finding interesting is documenting your headspace at a moment in time it's like when you look at your books when you're a kid of like you as thing like oh my gosh I can't believe I was there yeah. just because you, your headspace is always changing and evolving I don't think someone who's ever cracked it has stayed at that same level forever like it's always morphing and evolving so I think the evolvement around the thinking is I think something that is is really interesting so for me as much as the stuff I'm doing like great but I know that I'm just going to trip out to be like ah that's where your headspace was at because yeah. you sometimes forget because you're at, you're too focused in it. Yeah. So, you know, just even just like having like recording of like how I'm feeling at different times through the journey. Like I know what it felt like when I was 20 going through what I was going through to what I was 15 to 10, but it's not documented anything anywhere, you know. So part of it as well was just like the thing of like having it on file and be able to scroll back through. And like even there's, um, you know, I don't know if you've used the Google Photos app like that's online and stuff, but it's got an algorithm which finds any video footage as well that's got your audio voice on, knows that it's you and tags it all up from everything it's flipping like insane so imagine like 
where that AI is going to get to. So you'll be able to like scroll back through, show me audio of me and 20 years ago with you two and be like, holy shit, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's about us. Any other cool stuff? Yeah. You, you well, just like adding on to that, I think involve, evolving and like trying to kind of like find yourself kind of like as fast as possible is what I'm trying to do because it's like, um, I read this thing the other day. It was like, if you look back six months ago and you don't cringe at what you were doing six months ago, then you're not moving fast enough. And oh, I think so that's the goal to cringe. Well, <laughs> cringe. I think, I think. Well, I cringe if I looked back at what I was doing like a few months yeah, yeah. ago, even. And that's like good in a way or bad because like people they look back a few years ago and then they cringe, but I look back a few months ago and I cringe. So I think it's trying to move fast and find yourself better. Yeah. How about you, Will? That's it. I'm just open to changing yeah. all the time because I don't know if you're not open to change, what's the point? Like my mindsets and what I want to do, I mean, it's always drive and ambition, but it just changes all the time from, I mean, you meet awesome people, you just open your mind up to new ideas. I mean, I'm only three years into working hard, so, I mean, to people in two years older than me, I probably sound like I'm talk, talking crap. No, but, you, you, but you're going through the journey of, of, of it, right? And that's the thing. I think yeah. the sooner you get there, the quicker, the easier and better. And then, you know, you, you kind of, you, you'll stop being reactionary to what others think and you're just proactive to what you want to do. Yeah. I think there's something powerful about that, especially when you're youth. If you can get there, so, you know, like my thing was, you know, I've talked about it a little bit, like I think I could have got here three years earlier if I had less ego to partner with the right people earlier. So now I feel like at 32, I've lost three years. So I could have been, you know, 29 or 20, whenever I would have or did it. So now, I've, but now I've did that. It's like it's better. I feel at 30, 30 that I, you know, was inefficient by three, three years, 10% inefficiency by 30. But now I'm going to be like good, opposed to some you can meet them at 35, 40, 45, and you, they're still stuck. Or you, you know, and then their regret will be 50% of their life. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that whole thing. So I think it's just a, a times up. What do you mean by partnering? Sorry. What's that? What do you mean by partnering? By your partner, partner, like um, just finding good people to, to you know work on the stuff that you, you're shit at, delegating well, getting building the right team, having the right you know partnerships in business or you know all that stuff. Like the strategic partnership size is absolutely huge. Even just like the 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 thought, the th thinking around having good people you can talk business with is just huge. You know, like even this chat's been great. You know, I'm learning, you're learning. It's good. Uh, Craig's Big Ups, RB, awesome live feed and well done to the two sensational future New Zealand Inc. superstars. Happy days. <laughs> Cheers. Good stuff. On that note, we'll wrap this up. But you guys, I've got to go push stores. Do your little last little plug for your great epic event and say goodbye to these fine folks. You go. August 13th, AUT, uh, William Reynolds, Rachel G. We'll be setting up the event page later today and yeah, I'll comment on this once it's out. Follow our LinkedIn for updates. <laughs> yeah.